Hi, so uh, today uh, we will start uh, a new topic called uh, regression models uh, with uh, autocorrelated errors. Uh, here is the content of uh, this module, uh, source and uh, effect of autocorrelation and uh, detecting the presence of uh, autocorrelation and then you know if you have autocorrelation uh, in the model, I will explain what is this autocorrelation, then how to parameter, uh, how to estimate the parameter of the model. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, give the idea I mean, what is the objective of this uh, module, uh, given a set of data say x i uh, y i, while fitting a simple linear regression model say uh, y equal to beta naught plus uh, beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, we make several assumptions on the error term, we assume that expectation of E equal to sorry expectation of epsilon is equal to 0, variance of epsilon is equal to sigma square, we assume that the errors are uncorrelated and also we make uh, uh, normality assumption on the uh, error uh, to for the testing of hypothesis and you know for confidence and interval of the parameter. Well, now if the data set say uh, uh, x i and uh, x i y i is uh, collected sequentially over uh, time, then uh, the assumption of this uh, uh, independent error uh, is not uh, guaranteed. Okay. So, in that situation, I mean uh, when the data are collected uh, over uh, time, uh, the red, uh, those type of data are called you know time series uh, data. And uh, then how to deal in such situation when the errors are uh, correlated. Okay, let me you know write down um, the objective of this uh, module clearly. So, I am talking about uh, model say very simple uh, I mean simple linear regression model y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i and uh, uh, you are given the data set say x i y i. Okay. So, i is from 1 to n and uh, the assumption we make that basic uh, assumptions are we assume that expectation of epsilon i is equal to 0, variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square the constant variance and also we assume that you know on the uh, errors are uncorrelated. Um, so, I can write in this form that covariance of epsilon i epsilon j is equal to 0 because the expectation is also 0. Well, and also we make the assumption. So, this is the first one. The second one is that we assume that this epsilon i follows normal 0 sigma square and they are independent. Now, what I said is that you know, when, when this data say uh, I will write uh, y t instead of y i, y t x t are collected sequentially uh, in time, the 
usual assumption of independence of errors is not guaranteed. Okay. Anyway, such data are called data are called time series data. Okay. Uh, let me just you know to make this part clear what I mean by you know data are collected sequentially in time. Uh, let me just give one example to uh, to clear your doubt. This is uh, called you know uh, soft drink drink uh, concentrate data, and uh, this one is the regressor variable. Sorry, this is the regressor variable uh, x, and this is the sales amount y. And uh, this is the sales amount, and this one is the x is uh, expenditure on advertisement. So this is in thousand dollar unit. Okay, and so we have data on the amount of money uh, you know uh, used uh, for the advertisement and the sales amount for 20 years. So, this data you know this uh, this is uh, let me call this x t y t. So, this x t and y t are collected over 20 years. Uh, so, this is a time series data. Okay. Well, so so, when the data are collected sequentially in time, the usual assumption of independence of error is not uh, guaranteed. Okay. So, here we say that uh, errors are autocorrelated. Or also we call it uh, serially correlated. So that means that errors are correlated or serially correlated means correlation between. errors uh, is a step apart are always the same. So, I am talking about uh, the correlation between the correlation between uh, epsilon i or say epsilon t and epsilon t plus s this is uh, same for all t okay the correlation between errors S steps apart are always the same, okay? And we usually denote this by uh, rho s, okay? For s equal to one, two, three, like this. Okay, so. Uh, So the correlation between uh, 
residuals uh, say 1 or 2 or 3 steps apart is called uh, lag 1 or 2 or 3 serial correlation. Okay, so, if uh, the S is equal to 1, that means when uh, you are considering the correlation between the errors one step apart, that is called lag 1 uh, correlation or serial autocorrelation or serial correlation. So, what is the source of this uh, uh, autocorrelation? source of autocorrelation so the primary source cause of autocorrelation in regression problem involving uh, time series data uh, is failure to include one or more important regression regressors in the model. Okay. So, it says that you know the primary cause of autocorrelation in regression problem involving time series data is failure to include one or more important regressors in the model. Okay. So, what, what do we mean by this one is that uh, let me consider the example of uh, uh, soft drink uh, concentrate data. So, there we are trying to regress the sales amount on the amount of expenditure for uh, advertisement. Okay. But, you know the growth, uh, I mean the population increases uh, over time and this growth in population has, you know, uh, influence in the sales amount. So, so the population size is another important variable which uh, has influence on sales amount. So, if you do not include the population size uh, or increase in the population size you know that variable in the model, then uh, you can expect autocorrelation uh, in the uh, time series data. Okay? So, the it says that the primary cause of autocorrelation in a regression problem uh, involving time series data is you know is failure to include uh, uh, important regressor variable in the model okay so we understood the source of autocorrelation why it happens and then uh, now let me talk about the effect of autocorrelation if so if uh, effect of autocorrelation. So, if autocorrelation is there in the model, that means what is the meaning of this? That uh, epsilon i and epsilon j 
the correlation between them is not equal to 0. Okay. Well, so if this happen, if the errors are correlated, then what is the effect of that uh, while fitting a simple say uh, simpler multiple linear regression model. So, uh, if you are fitting a multiple linear regression model say y equal to x beta plus epsilon, then we know that the least square estimate is beta hat which is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, this is obtained using the least square estimate and uh, now if the uh, if you consider the basic assumption on the model that you know this uh, uh, epsilon i follow normal distribution with uh, uh, mean 0 variance sigma square and they are independent, then the, the conditions of the Gauss Markov theorems uh, are satisfied. And so, the, uh, the beta hat we get that beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse into x prime y that is the best linear unbiased estimator. So, but here once the condition that you know here the errors are correlated. So, here that condition is not true. So, errors are correlated here. So, because of the violence of this uh, violation of this condition that you know errors are uncorrelated. Uh, here beta hat is unbiased unbiased but beta hat is not minimum variance okay so so because of this uh, uh, problem like you know errors are correlated in this case. So, uh, the least square estimate beta hat is not the best linear unbiased estimator. Okay. Of course, we know, we know uh, if, if the variance of epsilon is equal to say sigma square v, uh, where v cannot be written as sigma square i then we know uh, how to get uh, the best linear unbiased estimator using the generalized uh, least square technique. Okay. Uh, the se second effect is when the errors are positively uh, autocorrelated i'll i'll say what is, what i mean by this one uh, then the ms residual may seriously underestimate sigma square, because we know that m s residual is uh, an unbiased estimator uh, for sigma square. So, uh, what is the consequence of this one that you know m s residual underestimate sigma square. The consequence of this one is that uh, the variance of suppose you are fitting the model y hat uh, simple linear regression model beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x is the fitted model. And uh, so, we know that variance of beta 1 hat is equal to m s residual by s 
x x. So, the standard error of beta 1 hat is equal to the square root of this quantity m s residual by s x x. Now, since this one is small, the standard error is going to be small okay? and the consequence of this one is that uh, when we uh, compute the confidence interval for say beta 1 hat. Uh, so, the confidence interval if you refer my first module the confidence interval for beta 1 is beta 1 hat plus T alpha by 2 n minus 2 degree of freedom into standard error into standard error of beta 1 hat and the lower bound is beta 1 hat minus T alpha by 2 n minus 2 standard error of beta 1 hat. Okay. Since this one is small, then this confidence interval uh, are uh, this confidence interval is short. Okay. So, you will get a narrow uh, interval for, for the uh, parameter okay. and which might not be the uh, uh, true uh, interval for the uh, parameter beta 1. And also uh, in the regression uh, model, we test the hypothesis like to check the significance of beta 1 uh, or, to sig or the significance of the model. Uh, or the linear term, we check the hypothesis that H naught is say beta 1 equal to 0 against the H 1 that uh, beta 1 is not equal to 0. And you know that uh, the test statistic to test this one is T equal to beta 1 hat by standard error of beta 1 hat. So, uh, see, when there exists positive autocorrelation uh, in error, the MS residual underestimates sigma square and the consequence of that is that the standard, standard error of beta 1 hat is small. So, this one is small, so T is large, so this is large. Okay. So, that means, uh, that beta 1 may be significant. So, you will get the result that beta 1 is significant when it is really not okay, because of the uh, positive autocorrelation in the data. Okay, so, these are the uh, effect of uh, autocorrelation. Now, uh, let me talk about uh, how to detect uh, autocorrelation. So, detecting autocorrelation. So, the first uh, uh, technique is you know the residual plot. Uh, residual plot is useful for the detection of autocorrelation. So, what we plot is that you plot uh, So, given the data set x i y i or x t y t, you fit a simple linear regression model. So, once you have the fitted model, you can compute the residuals and then you plot, uh, let me call it s 
x t y t, then you plot residual E t against t. Okay? And if you see that your plot is like this, say for example, this is the residual plot E t against t, here what happen is that till this time point you see all the residuals. So, this is the line E equal to 0. So, till this time point all the residuals are negative and from here to here you can see all the residuals are positive and again the residuals are negative uh, in this segment. Okay. Uh, so, residual of identical sign occur in a cluster. So, if the residuals of uh, uh, identical sign occur in a cluster, then this indicate this indicate the positive positive autocorrelation. Okay, maybe I will uh, uh, explain why uh, this is uh, the why this is true. Uh, before that, you know, uh, let me uh, give some more residual plots. Uh, like you know, if the, this residual plot is E i or E t against E i minus 1. Okay. So, here uh, we are sort of trying to find the relation between uh, E i and E i minus 1 that means, uh, lag 1 uh, correlation. So, if you see the plot is like this say for example, then this one is sort of uh, lower left to upper right pattern indicates positive lag 1 autocorrelation. Okay. And, uh, and if you see uh, the scatter plot of E i against E minus 1 is like this. So, E i E i minus 1 it is say for example, like this. Okay. That means, uh, uh, this is upper left to lower right pattern. This indicates Uh, negative lag 1 autocorrelation. Okay. And the other one is, so this, this these plots are like to detect uh, lag 1 autocorrelation. 
Similarly, for lag 2, you have to plot E i against E i minus 2 and see how they are related. So, E i, E i minus 1, if you see the pattern is like this, then this indicates that errors are uncorrelated or unrelated. Okay. So, this is the graphical technique to uh, identify the existence of uh, autocorrelation and specifically for lag 1 autocorrelation you have to plot this is basically you are trying to find the relation between E i and the previous residual and uh, as you see you know E i now this this sort of you know if you fit a straight line if you fit a model between uh, if you regress E i on E i minus 1, you will get a uh, straight line model like E i is equal to some rho into E i minus 1. Okay. And uh, this clearly says here rho is positive uh, and E i increases sort of as E i minus 1 increases. Okay. So, they are very similar in magnitude. Okay. So, this is what the positive lag 1 autocorrelation and negative lag 1, uh, this indicates negative lag 1 autocorrelation and this one says that there, uh, there is no uh, correlation between, uh, between E i and E i minus 1, that means the errors are uncorrelated. Okay. Now, we will talk about uh, one uh, statistical test. Uh, to test the uh, presence of autocorrelation. The test is called the Darwin Watson test. Okay. Well, suppose we wish to fit the model say y u equal to beta naught plus beta i x i u plus epsilon u u is from 1 to n by least squared technique to the observation to, to observation say y u and then I am talking about multiple linear regression model x 1 u x 2 u and uh, something x k u. Okay. So, what we do is that we usually assume that uh, this uh, epsilon u follows normal distribution with 0 sigma square and their i i d that is what that means that we are assuming that the lag is autocorrelation uh, is equal to 0. That means, correlation between the errors uh, s step apart that is equal to 0. So, so, if you want to use least square technique to fit this model, you have to assume this, that means you are assuming this. Okay. Now, we want to what we want to do is that we want to see if this assumption is justified for the given data. Okay. So, for that uh, what 
we will do is that we will test uh, hypothesis, uh, we will test this hypothesis H naught that uh, rho s is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that uh, rho s is equal to rho to the power of s this rho is not equal to 0 and it is a modulus value is less than 1. Okay. Now, what I will do is that you know, why particularly we are considering this alternative, how this alternative comes, uh, we will talk about that little bit. So, if the null hypothesis is accepted here in, in our test, so we will be talking about one uh, test uh, procedure uh, using uh, the Darwin Watson test. And if the null hypothesis is accepted here, that is rho s is equal to 0, uh, that means uh, uh, there is no autocorrelation in the error. And uh, here we wrote the alternative hypothesis rho s is equal to rho to the power of s. Uh, now, what I will do is that I will try to uh, justify the choice of this alternate alternative hypothesis. Okay. So, this comes this alternative hypothesis comes uh, from the assumption that assumption that uh, the errors are either follow this model epsilon u is equal to rho epsilon u minus 1 plus z u that means, uh, the errors are first order autoregressive errors, okay, where this z u first order autoregressive means there is a linear relationship between epsilon u and epsilon u minus 1, okay, where z u follows normal 0 sigma square and this z u is independent of epsilon u minus 1, epsilon u minus 2 and of z u minus 1, z u minus 2 like this. Okay. So, if the errors are first order autoregressive error, then I can write this uh, epsilon u uh, in this form. So, my epsilon u I took this is epsilon u is equal to rho epsilon u minus 1 plus uh, z u I took right. Okay. Now, I can write this one as rho rho epsilon u minus 2 plus z u minus 1. I am just replacing epsilon u minus 1 by this one plus z u. Okay. So, this can be written as rho square plus sorry rho square epsilon u minus 2 plus rho z u minus 1 plus z u. Okay. So, again if you replace this uh, epsilon u minus 1 by this quantity as rho epsilon u minus 3 plus z u minus 2 
plus rho z u minus 1 plus z u. So, what we will get is that you will get uh, root of the power of 3 epsilon u minus 3 plus rho square z u minus 2 plus rho z u minus 1 plus z u. So, ultimately you can write this as again you replace epsilon u minus 3 using this formula. You can write this as root to the power of k z u minus k, k is from 0 to u. You can check that. So, this is what uh, the epsilon u in terms of z u z. Okay. Uh, so, expectation of epsilon u is equal to 0 because expectation of z is equal to 0. What about the variance of epsilon u now? So, the variance of uh, they are all independent z, z i's are in, independent. So, you can write this uh, the variance of this one as uh, uh, 1 plus rho square plus root to the power of 4 something like this into sigma square because because the variance of z u minus k is sigma square and uh, they are independent. So, you can write in this form and this can be written as sigma square by 1 minus rho square right and similarly you know you can check that the covariance of epsilon u and epsilon s plus u. So, I am trying to find the correlation between if the errors are uh, you know first order autoregressive, what is the correlation between epsilon u and epsilon s plus u. So, you can check the covariance is equal to uh, rho to the power of s sigma square. Uh, 1 by 1 minus rho square. So, this is the covariance and since this is the covariance and uh, then it is clearly the correlation between epsilon u and epsilon s plus u is equal to rho to the power of s. Okay. And uh, here as you see now the epsilon u which is first order autoregressive they follow normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square by 1 minus rho square. And under the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis is under h naught that rho equal to 0 under this null hypothesis uh, this sigma sorry epsilon u they follow normal 0 sigma square. You put rho equal to 0 here normal sigma square and the correlation also becomes 0 because rho equal to 0. So, the correlation between uh, them is 0. So, they are independent I mean uh, of course, that is uh, uh, yeah. So, the under null hypothesis uh, epsilon u <coughs> follow normal 0 sigma square and they are independent. Okay. So, well <coughs> so, we understood the significance of uh, this uh, alternative hypothesis now. So, we are testing the hypothesis that uh, uh, h naught is uh, rho s is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis h 1 that rho s is equal to rho to the power of s. So, and uh, we, we have checked that this alternative hypothesis in the, under the assumption that the errors are first order autoregressive. 
well then rho s is equal to rho to the power of s. This is the correlation between sigma u sorry epsilon u and epsilon u plus s. Now, to test this hypothesis to test uh, h naught against h 1. So, what we do is that we fit uh, the model say y equal to x beta plus epsilon assuming that all the basic assumptions are true and uh, using the least square technique and then once you have the fitted model you can compute the residuals and compute compute the residuals E i and then once you have the E i it does not matter whether the bas basic assumptions are true or not. Now, you can check whether uh, there is a autocorrelation in the error term or not by using the test. Uh, we then form the Durbin Watson test statistic and that d equal to e u minus e u minus 1 square u is from 2 to n by e u square u is from 1 to so, given a set of data, you fit the model, you find the residual and then you compute the Darwin Watson uh, test statistic. And then based on this test statistic, uh, we will now test this hypothesis whether there exists uh, autocorrelation in the data or not. Okay. Uh, so, the distribution of of d lies between 0 and 4 and the distribution is symmetric about 2. Okay. So, we know the test statistic to test this hypothesis and now we will be talking about you know uh, what are the critical regions uh, when to reject and uh, accept. Uh, say first case uh, one sided test against the alternative that rho is greater than 0. So, basically we are testing here uh, for uh, lag 1 that uh, h naught rho equal to 0 against h 1 rho is greater than 0. So, we compute the uh, test statistic d and then if d is less than d l, I will say what is this d l? You reject uh, h naught. So, there is a table for this uh, Darwin Watson uh, test statistic. So, uh, the table is given for uh, it is only it requires the number of observations you have. So, for that uh, um, soft drain concentrate data, uh, there we had 20 observations and uh, then from the table you have to see the d l and d u value corresponds to n equal to 20. Okay. So, if d is less than d l, we reject uh, h naught. if d is greater than d u, 
we accept uh, H naught. I will explain you know, why suddenly this uh, uh, critical region and if d L is less than d and less than d u, uh, the test is uh, inconclusive. Okay. Now, what happens is that if the d is small, if uh, so given a data you fit a model uh, using the ordinary least square technique and you get E i and once you have the residuals you can compute the Darwin Watson test statistic. So, small value of d implies rho is equal to 0. That means, small value of d indicates there is no okay, you reject uh, this one that means, you accept this one. So, small value of d indicates that autocorrelation exists in the model. Okay. So, if, if d is small you are rejecting this that means, you are accepting this. Well, uh, acceptance of rho is greater than 0 means uh, the uh, data ha has positive uh, uh, or the error has uh, positive autocorrelation. So, let me just explain this part why, why, why this is true. So, the positive autocorrelation when it is positive autocorrelation you just recall the graph we are plotting E i against E i minus 1. So, this is the case when it has positive correlation. The positive autocorrelation uh, indicates successive uh, error terms are of similar magnitude okay and the difference in residuals ei minus ei minus 1 will be small so, this is the case when uh, it indicates the existence of positive correlation. So, here you can see you take a point and this is the E i minus 1 value and this is. So, the E i minus 1 and E i they are almost of similar magnitude that is why you get a uh, you know all the points are uh, centered about the line x equal to y or the line this is centered about E i equal to E i minus 1. So, points are centered about this line means uh, E i and E i minus 1 are very similar and since they are similar uh, the difference is small. So, once the difference is small you now recall the Darwin Watson uh, test statistic D that in that uh, involves the difference. So, that is if the difference is small the D is going to be small and once D is small that implies the existence of positive lag 1 autocorrelation and that is why we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. So, I hope you know uh, this will make clear why uh, this is the critical region. As I told you, there is a table I will uh, talk in the next class, there is a table uh, for d l and d u value for different n and for different alpha, 
and uh, I will talk about the other cases also in the next class. So, we need to stop now, uh, we will continue with the Darwin Watson uh, test uh, with uh, some example to illustrate uh, the Darwin Watson's test uh, in the next class. Thank you.